can't put it bones neither, can you? No. Refreshing. Brilliant. Good evening everyone, thank you for tuning in on tonight's live. We are honoured and privileged to have the lovely Patty Negre on tonight. Can we just start off by, uh, we've just said before we came on live how privileged and honour and right now I'm pretty starstruck that you're actually sat at my computer talking to us right now but I'm not going to ah. look like the weird Excuse me. fan freak Excuse right me. now <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's an absolute honor to have you here oh thank you um, thank you happy to be here honestly it really is isn't yeah, it definitely is <laughs> um so can we just start off by you telling obviously um the viewers a little bit about yourself Sure. Um, I live in Hollywood. I'm an LA girl. Uh, um, I'm a psychic. I'm a medium. Um, this way since birth, I when I was three or four years old, I knew that the so-called imaginary friends little kids have weren't imaginary. I could talk. I could communicate. The guy under the bed, the guy in the closet, we're all real, getting real information. Um, I've, I've been obsessed and not in a dark or morbid way with the dead. I literally did my first seance when I was seven or eight years old in my little suburban household. Um, I'm a witch. I use the term good witch because I like it better than white witch or anything else because it's I like Wizard of Oz and I have a big pink fluffy dress and good means a lot of things. Yeah. Um, so, and, and that's it born into me too. I just, I, I've just had a connection to nature, to herbs, to trees, knowing from the time I was born, it's in the blood, like this, herb will do this, this will make my mom feel better, this will give her energy, this will give prosperity if I put this rosemary in her purse, stuff like that. So, and then I've spent my life studying it going, okay, if this is in me, this knowledge is in me and this gift is in me, let me figure out what the hell it is. So I've studied religion, philosophy, occult sciences, regular sciences, philosophy, yeah, metaphysics, and I take it all down to energy. That way I, you could talk in any language or any template that people do, whether it's a typical Judeo-Christian or paranormal speak or new age speak or pagan like myself speak, if you go down to the through line of energy. So that's what I do. Amazing. So yeah. you've just um, touched on um, about being gifted from an early age. Uh, what made you realize that you had this gift? What what was the first inkling that you had? I think just talking to the spirits and having real information. I would literally like, my mom would say, I would out of body travel. I just, it was just, the veil was open for me. My mom would say something like, oh, we're gonna go next door and we're gonna meet the Smith family or something. And I'm like, ah, I was, and I'm like by five, I go, oh, I was there last night. She's like, you were not there last night. You were tucked in bed last night. I went, no, I was there. They have a blue living room. They have striped wallpaper in the kitchen. There's a couch that should be on the other wall in this room. And I would just lay it out to her. And wow. I just thought everybody could do that. I just thought everybody could see the spirits and creatures and elementals. And, and I do think kids can. I think it just gets taught out of us in our modern, very non-mystical modern society. I mean, even our religion isn't very mystical or spiritual anymore. So, I mean, it's coming back. It's coming back as we move into that age of Aquarius. But it's just, I, it was more of a shock to, shock to me to see that everybody didn't see like this or have this knowing. <laughs> like, what? Sure you do. <laughs> I kind of agree with you there, like um, children being born with with that sort of ability and um, some children carry that on and some children lose that. I think yeah. um, as you grow up, you, your mind starts to change. Um, but do you think it's possible for, a, for someone to regain that back? A hundred percent, yes. 
and to be not taught out of a kit. I, I, I teach that. I work with that. What it is, it's very, again, getting into the science part. It's left brain, right brain. Your left brain is your reasoning, rational, logical brain that we go to work. We do all those things we have to do. Your right brain, that's your spiritual artist, creative brain. That's where magic happens. That's where spirits can talk to people. Hi, Christopher Hall. I'm a friend. <laughs> um, so that right brain, and that's the one that we, that's where imagination lies, let alone spirituality. But we, we have to dance between them. We can't have a spiritual, intuitive, wow, I believe my deceased grandma is standing behind me. And then go, well, that doesn't make sense. She's dead and she, you, you just shut it down. So it's having that childlikeness that, that anything can happen. In the craft, in witchcraft, you learn that things like literally laying down your broom on your best one, your witch's broom, which travels the room. On this side of the broom is logic and gravity and, you know, unicorns don't exist. On this side of the broom, anything is possible. And when you step over it and you allow yourself to stop to shut down your logical brain, then you can open it up to this whole spirit world. And I think there's a billion little, even my, in my book, I give exercises, include, easy, like fast, 30 second things to balance it out. Dream school, which I literally have people put a glass of water by the side of your bed at night. This is a conduit. We are 60% water. Our planet is 70% water. Water is the emotion. It's the flow, the water element that is also where, where spirit lies. It's the mists, the mists of the ancestors. So when you go to bed, you go put your water down. Don't drink water by your bed. Don't see how bad it tastes in the morning unless it's really sealed. It collects everything, but your dream water, put it by the bed and just say, okay, I want to develop my psychic ability. I want to develop my intuition, whatever that is, or what outfit to wear tomorrow, or I want to talk to whatever, show me what I need to know. You are giving the universe, God, whatever words you use, permission to download you while you're asleep, either in dream state or just download state. Because what it is, it's like when you're asleep, when that chatty left brain isn't in the way, that's all it is. And then in the morning, I have these little techniques like 10 minutes before, get up, ask a question, go back to sleep, you'll have the answer in the morning. Just journal for two to three minutes, commit two minutes to your development a day and you will be surprised a lot of people start automatic writing you know don't censor yourself right i don't know what this is my dream or i don't remember my dream patty's stupid here's my shopping list it, it, whatever you write it will start to come out of you again getting that logical brain out of the way it's all it is it's learning the dance and um, you touched upon dreams there um I, I speak about this quite often especially with brent um I tend to have very same occurring dream every single night and I've had that for my whole of my life really where I'm I'm in this building and there's just random doors sometimes I can go through these doors sometimes I can't go through these doors um, and that's every night without fail does that mean something or is it just Oh, that could mean a lot of things. Dreams are symbolic. I mean, and that's a pretty great dream. The doors, I mean, doors are representing opportunity, doors of knowledge, doors of thought. I mean, it's it's pretty obvious that I, I, I actually interpret dreams in a few different ways. Not my overly specialty, but I've got, I know enough Freudian psychology, how you would look at it. I know enough Jungian psychology, how to do it. I know enough just from the psychic intuitive side of things but i mean i think that's pretty these doors i think it's literally like your guide your spirit going okay okay emma step through these doors on days that you can't it may be representing something from that day that maybe you didn't step into an opportunity or you were fearful of it or maybe it's telling you you shouldn't step into it that's where you again that you have to dance between that just the knowing and logic mm. when you will go back and forth but that's kind of a cool dream to have. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's every night. <laughs> and sometimes yeah. I get chased around this building as well, which is the best. And it, and again, and you can control them. Um, like I use a lot of sigils and symbols. If you want to stop dreams, have a different cup of water that like nightmares go into, or I work with a lot of symbols and sigils. Like a helm of Awe, it's a Norwegian, it's a rune. It's an Icelandic rune, eight-sided cross. This, especially with kids, it works for adults too, but it could just grab and take away bad dreams. You stick, write this on a piece of paper and stick it under your mattress. There's a million things you could do to control it, you know. 
Um, we've 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 seen on your biography that um, you're the best-selling international author of a book called Old World Magic for the Modern World. Um, I am. What inspired you to write that? Saying the same what thing. What inspired over you to write again? that? And um, <laughs> really, um, because again, I, I I simplify things. I'm a simple girl. I'm a I'm a I'm always in a hurry. I Yes, it is great to meditate for an hour, but I have 30 seconds to pull things together, whether it's like, whether I'm, I'm stressed or I'm worried or I'm this or I'm that or I'm an emotional. So this book is using what I see working elementally with simple, simple mind, body, spirit. And I found myself, I, I work with people every day, my private practice, my clients, I teach. I speak, and and what I noticed every day is that uh, the biggest thing we all do is we give away our power. We give away our power to other people. We give away our power to limiting belief systems. We give away our power to fear all the time, self-doubt, all this stuff. And it's like the tiniest shift of perception and you can grab your power back. So this big book, even though it looks like a simple magic book, ooh, how to lose weight, how to make money, how to love in the kitchen. It's actually about empowering yourself. So yeah, it's. I, I just got tired of saying the same thing over and over again. Okay, it's page seven, you know, you need to do this elemental balancing exercise. So you need a dragon or whatever that is. And again, just for people who can't go do private sessions to have a self-help, again, stuff like the dream school, isn't it? Stuff like how to work, work, develop your gifts, how to talk to dead people is in here in a super simple. I honestly spent more time unwriting it than writing it on purpose. Because when I started, whatever, 30, whatever years ago, I would buy these big, beautiful books on spirituality spirituality or metaphysics or whatever and they'd look at them and they'd be overwhelming and I'd sit them on the shelf and go oh, I'll never figure it out and then I'd get a really simple book by somebody like Scott Cunningham the early Wiccan moon or just simple and I would devour them so when I decided this after I I, I wanted it simple easy approachable positive read so um again i i spent as much time unwriting and going way too many words those are just words for you patty just lose them <laughs> so yeah. yeah it's been a bestseller in five countries um i've had it out over a year now so yay um, I, again it, it, it it's just i'm about people grab your power we are amazing beings humans are amazing beautiful species so if people want to buy it, where can they buy it from, your book? Amazon. Amazon mm -hmm. in every country. <laughs> um, I mean, I take it with me when I do the Paracons and I speak and conventions and all that, which is much less this year, you know, due to quarantine. Yeah. Yeah. But you can get it on Amazon America, Amazon UK, Amazon France, Amazon wherever you are. Definitely. Whatever your particular it's Amazon. Amazon. And it comes in for sure. Ebook or audiobook or print book, whatever you want. Brilliant. Um, so we not just the book as well, but you're involved in quite a few programs. Um, I don't want to talk about Ghost Adventure. I'm going to leave that for a little bit longer. But and um, what other programs have you been involved with? Uh, I work a billion. I'm, I'm a Hollywood girl, and I've been a producer for 20 years. And right. I did. I used to keep it really separate. My my spiritual world, because I have a very corporate production company, and I'm like going, oh my god, these people cannot know that you know I talk to dead people and dance around bonfires fires in the club. <laughs> they could not because it's very corporate. But in in 2000 eight that corporate market crashed with the economic downturn and reality tv took a hit so somebody who knew i was like legit at this and been doing it my whole life they needed somebody to do a seance on this show and i'm like nope 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 won't do it that's a separate world but they talked me into it um because it was a show i figured nobody would watch <laughs> on a station i figured nobody would watch of course they did and i fell in love with the genre um plus my my theater background, my television background, my improvisational background, and my legitimate gift as a, a psychic medium, well-trained witch shaman practitioner just fit in. So I became the person to call, whether Nicole Ritchie, you know, uh, candidly Nicole, or Jeff Lewis clearing houses, a bunch of episodes of Pit Boss, which is 
funny little people in Pitta. I work a Bad Girls Club, Beverly Hills Lit, Pawn Show, every, cooking shows, in I mean dozens. Um, I work a lot with Awesomeness TV. I don't know if they have that there. It's one of those have its own media. Hi, Annie. Um, and and which is great because I love kids. That that that's really catered to teenagers and high school. And whether I'm doing a seance with them or teaching them how to clear their spaces and clear their heads or giving them new, you know, perceptions on how to take your life into your own hands. We create it. We create miracles. So, boy, what shows. Again, and I'm just talking as the witchy or psychic or medium show. I think there's, hi, Casey. Um do, you know, dozens. Um, I occasionally still do acting, not very much. I got to play Jill Biden in a film a couple of years ago. So that would be cool because see if she may end up the first lady, we'll see. Um, but I do a little bit. I did a film with Josh Dumel where I got to be Ernie Hudson's wife a couple of years ago, which is cool because he was one of the original Ghostbusters in that old Dan Aykroyd movie. That, and I'm like, oh, my God, you're a real Ghostbuster. <laughs> I'm a different kind of Ghostbuster, but you're a Ghostbuster. <laughs> so I still do that and I still have my production company I don't do very much with it because I don't have time um, but I just had a little gig last week um, Patty what is Christopher writing can I read these is that okay your basic yes, yeah. in your brilliant book how do I best direct energies to ensure successful spell casting clapping and rubbing my palms to harness F yes that's effective again and you know Chris because you've studied with me enough I will do it with chitting drum more chance you have to build it's passion 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 rubbing your hands is great that's called a mill working all you need is a teacup and a spoon or a knife to create a real mill and you're stirring it and you know know the difference of counterclockwise to release clockwise to add you can create that anything. You don't have to have tools or things. Rubbing palms is great. Clapping hands, stamping your foot, building, building, building the energy, and then you dispatch it. Magic. And there's someone at the door. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. <laughs> this is a, it's October. October always just goes goofy for me. I uh, I don't know. It's probably the delivery of a package, I'm hoping. If you need to go and get it, you can go and get it. Okay, okay, you guys talk amongst yourself. I'll be back in yep. first. We'll ask for some questions. You can do what you need to do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, just while Patty's um, just left us for a little minute, um, has anyone got any questions that they'd like for us to put on the screen to ask Patty? Again, we're thankful for everyone being here, yeah, taking the time it. out to come and watch. Um, was amateurs. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's an absolute honour. I'm still a bit strong. I, know. I, I, don't know what, I don't know what to say at the minute, to be honest with you. My arms are sweaty and <laughs> I'm like literally starstruck right now. She is definitely so much fun. Oh, she's back. Sorry. Hey. <laughs> it was just a delivery. Just a delivery on the porch. But there you go. Hi, everybody. Life, real life. It's October. <laughs> Everything's crazy. Um, just touching a little bit back on um, your younger days, um, was there ever a time where you felt like the gift got a little bit too much or oh, was definitely. frightened at times? Yeah, when I, I think in the, like the 80s, before I read this, I want when you're young and I want to be like everybody else. I don't want to see dead people. I just wanted to shut it down. I wanted to be normal. I And I hadn't really trained a lot how to keep in your body when you want to. So I went around wearing hats because that actually for anybody who, like if you leave your body a lot, wear a hat. That helps keep you in until you learn how to do it. So there was a small time, yes. And, and then I kind of, that's when that first new agey thing started happening and Shirley MacLaine and out on a limb and, and I went, oh, wait, the spirituality thing is fun again. Let me get into that, which again, that was a little squeaky. And then I ended up into the whole um, kind of embracing everything, kind of generalized pagan, um, you know, which philosophy. Uh, but I, I draw from everything. It's like, oh yeah, and this part from Buddhism and this from Taoist and this from Hindu. So 
it's a big pot. So, but I, there was a time I just wanted to be, you know, those, that, those young days when you just want to be like everybody else. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's a question I, for Cecilia. My first attempt to communicate. Yes, I was, uh, that, I was seven or eight. And again, I was obsessed with the dead, but not in a dark way. So I, I'm like, I have to talk to these people. And, and I went in my hallway. You know, everybody has a hall that doesn't have windows or lights. I stuffed towels under the doors to get it a pitch black. I was with my best friend, Sherry Jones. Um, and then I realized I, really, I didn't know any dead people. I was seven or eight. So I'm like, um, Marilyn Monroe, John Kennedy. I was just naming any. <laughs> dead celebrities of seven or eight year olds know. I came up with my first chant, again, just coming out of me, my first sound magic, my first chant. And all of a sudden my windowless, lightless hallway filled with orbs and things flying through it. It was like, ah, we of course ran out of the room screaming, ran out of the house screaming, but up and down inside I was like, yes, yes, this is real and this is controllable. This I, and I since I was little, even before that, I just had this knowledge that this is our realm of existence. The other realms are great and they're real, but they really do have to play by our rules unless we give them power over us. And most people don't know that, so they give away their power. Again, getting back to my power thing, whether it's you know, give away your power to your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, spouse, or boss, or give away your power to the spirit world, you don't have to. And I kind of yeah. always just knew that. So that was my very first seance. And then from then, that's when I really became the seeker and the studier. So, and I've had some wild ones since then. <laughs> I can imagine. What has been your wildest seance you've had? My, my wildest seance, um, well, I'll give you my best story. And I, I know a couple of you, probably Christopher has already heard this, or, but I, I think some of my scariest ones have been with, Zach and the boys, but I know you don't want to talk about that yet. But my wildest one, um, I was at a house. It's in my neighborhood. I live in the Hollywood Hills. I live in an old, the first movie mogul area. Is there. Oh, wow. Literally, uh, yeah. Mary Pickford, the silent movie star's dressing room is next door to me, where Frank Capra and Harry Cohen wrote It's a Wonderful Life is across the street. It's got the big movie star houses and the little working bungalows. Uh, but anyway, I was at a house. It looks like a haunted house. It's one of the bigger movie stars. Charlie Chaplin built it for Mary Astor, his girlfriend at the time. It was a big, crazy wow. party house in the 20s and 30s. And then later, and a crazy party house. And um, and then the Rolling Stones manager bought it in the 60s. So the Rolling Stones lived there, the Mamas and Papas, Fleetwood Mac, Graham Parsons, and then they moved out. And then the guy who read it, who invented the real-life sex doll moved in. And then he moved out and then Marilyn Manson moved in and he recorded there. And then it got a little scary for Marilyn and he, he was my neighbor for seven years. And then oh, he wow. moved out and, and then the, a new, the house itself totally attracts creative, a little chaotic, sometimes a little dark, but these artist types, these right brain creative types. So, um, and the, so the, the people who were living there brought me in to do a seance. I knew who I was, we're in the neighborhood. And there were some spirits there and young people around the table. And again, that young age, just around 20, has so much life for us. A lot of paranormal stuff's always going to happen. So this one, and it was a table in this very haunted looking house. So um, lifting the veil as I do. And this one kid just got a little disrespectful. And I'm like, kind of keep it cool. Because I say, be open if you can. It's okay to be a little skeptical, but you have to be respectful because that's where you'll get in trouble because we believe it or not, it's real. And a lack of respect is where you get in trouble. But he was just getting a little, maybe because he was on TV. We literally did have four cameras going, which is more than usual. We had four cameras going. So anyway, he starts getting real idiot. And, and first cool things were happening. Like the big French doors flew open and everybody's screaming and screaming. And I'm like, oh, oh. And the producer side of me, so I, wow, that's cool. It's kind of like special effect. But but I wouldn't, not. it's all legit. I would never, ever, ever fake anything. I go, wow, that was a focal point. 
and it closed the door and we're filming and then that happens again cut it all on camera and then it's like but i felt this tension building with the spirit this tension building building and then the, there's these little speakers you know people used to have radio speakers on the floor old school and these speakers came on <sighs> this white noise <sighs> Everyone's like, ah, this like record player and speakers. We looked later, it wasn't even plugged in. That came on twice, but this yeah. tension was building and this kid was still being kind of an idiot and saying stuff. We were working with the Ouija boards. I'm a big believer in Ouija, she was correctly. We were finding out this horrible uh, stuff that had happened in the twenties in the dirt basement, always the dirt basement. And anyway, he said something really ridiculous and not him, but one of the cameramen facing him burst into flames. Shut Hot on fire. Wow. Like angel wings of fire up his back, a big V. No candle, no fireplace. We weren't anywhere near the fireplace. Everybody is screaming again. Two cameras caught it. Um, his camera didn't. He got the, the backwards point of view of like, everybody, you're on fire. Um, one other camera like hit the ceiling, hit the floor. You know, you, you test the strength of a cameraman by the room bursting into flames. So all of a sudden me, cool, you know, witch medium Patty becomes a medic, which I am, I'm EMT. I'm like, drop and roll. Ah, and I'm screaming at all this stuff. And I'm screaming at the spirits, like not screaming, but I'm, I'm calling in my wards and protectors, shutting it down, shutting it down, shutting it down. Hi, Washington. So I'm shutting it down. I'm going, we are done. I don't care what we're filming. Nobody burst into flames on my watch. <laughs> That's not okay. Um, so um, seance is over. Um, but the guy who caught on, his shirt burned off him like poof. And and it shouldn't have. It was cotton. It should not have went poof. It should have. It, it was like a synthetic. But there was blistering. I'm like, we're done. And he goes, no, no. I have a sweater. I'm okay. He was like inspired. <laughs> he was a super skeptic. He was inspired. And I'm like, okay. I talked to the spirits. I put some more protections. I'm like, we're not even going to get rid of you at the end of this. Come on. Just I, where I usually really shut it down. The people who live here like you. So the spirit said he wouldn't light anybody on fire. The kid got really, really well behaved, kind of became a choir boy, the idiot kid. <laughs> I'm like, well, he's not a problem anymore. So we finished the seance, we got good information. But the coolest thing that happened is um, like three weeks later, literally three weeks later, the guy who caught on fire, he goes, Patty, look at my back. And, and where the blistering was, it literally, it looked like he had got a tattoo of a dragon. Open mouth, big sharp teeth, winged head into the shape of a serpent. And that's the exact energy I called in to shut down the sounds. I work dragon energy. I work drag, I work crossroads magic. Little dragons everywhere. I'm like, oh my God, you have a tramp stamp of a dragon on your back. How cool is that? <laughs> oh my and he was God. Like, he was so inspired by it. He actually wrote a script. He wrote it. He was, he's a, he's a movie maker, a documentary, pretty well known. And he, so he wrote a script funny, kind of based on me about a, a, a Hollywood psychic, a TV psychic who works every TV show out there doing yet another reality show, but then a portal opens up and then it turns into a big old horror film. He actually wrote it with um, Stephen Norrington, the guy who wrote the blade series league of extraordinary gentlemen. I mean, who's also now way left of center of the Hollywood. They wrote this script and, but I sat down, they haven't done it yet. I hope they do. It's called portal. Um, but I sat down with them for like five hours at my dining room table. I'm like, Oh, Lauren, you can't say that. You can't, you can't say that. He's like, but you said that. I'm like, I know I said that, but that will open a portal. We don't want to be one of those cursed horror films, do we? Let's say something that doesn't mean anything. So, because that's what happens in those movies. They open real stuff. So we we change it if it does get done. It's not going to be a, uh, you know, cursed <laughs> film. So I hope they do. I don't know who will play me, but it'll be fun. <laughs> that is so anyway, yeah. So that was my wildest one. I've had a few since. I mean, I've had... I mean, I, I've had a, a lot since then, but that's my only spontaneous combustion. What did, yeah. What did Greg ask you specific color candles during white magic spell casting more effective than using one basic white candle? Or is it the practitioner's intent most powerful? Oh, you 
study so well. It's your intent, <laughs> of course. There is truth in colors. I, we're going to spell casting now. You know, like, oh, pink naturally means love. And we've given it that meaning, so it does. Red naturally means passion. So we've given that color. But if to you, you're doing a, a love spell for love, and chartreuse green means love, you chartreuse green. You know, white works for everything, of course. Black works for drawing things out. And there is attributes to each color, but your intent and your belief system to me is the most important. What it means to you means more than what some book told you. And that's how to learn organically or shamanically on your craft. So I'm still like thinking about that. So you just, you just said it's blown my actual mind. Yeah, it, yeah, me too. It was like, and the crazy, the wild thing is I went back three days ago to do a seance there again because there's a whole new set of the house those people moved out went their way and a whole new set of young creative filmmakers and musicians because that's what the house draws have moved in and they heard all the neighbors were telling they didn't know who i was they're new and all the neighbors were telling them how haunted their house was and and patty and about the seance where somebody burst into flames and around the neighborhood so he finally tracked me, finally tracked me down. And I went there three days ago and we did another seance with his new group of friends. We had about 15, 20 people, completely different. Com the bad oh, spirits yeah. were gone or changed. The only house spirit, because I bring up everybody, you both talk to your grandma, your uncle, the kid who died in high school, because my sciences are much more warm and fuzzy, not like the ones you're usually going to see me do on TV. But, but we, the only house ghost that came was a filmmaker himself and he kept like wanting to run they had cameras going too it's like oh he wants to help you so i mean houses can change energy changes so it was really cool that house change of people change of energy has a whole deal and then we went out they have this it's old hollywood cool house four levels spiral staircase leaded glass stained glass very very masonic like 12 of this kind of like sacred geometry it's th there was a um a literal compass i work at compasses everything on the floor as you walked in sadly the compass isn't there anymore have i ever created a spell daily yes <laughs> I, so um but again so i just went back we went in the garden oh i was saying we went back into the garden and um, oh, so I wanted to talk to the nature spirits there because they have a lot of fae. They have a lot of fairy because it is this, this tropical garden in the middle of the Hollywood Hills. So it was it was such a fun, sweet, sweet experience. Considering it's the place that you know last time was <laughs> Hell's <Yes>. Fire. <laughs> I would love to be at round a table while you do a seance. Oh, that would be a dream. I, I was going to. Yeah. But obviously, you, you know, we're from the UK. Have you got any plans to come to the UK at any point, or? I I hope so. I actually somebody invited me for some kind of an event there, maybe next fall, and I hope to. I'm going to be in Ireland in May. I'm doing. I'm so excited. I'm doing. I'm leading. I mean, a tour company's doing it, but I'm the person to do it. a haunted. Game of Thrones tour of Ireland castles. There's a few spots left, May 13 through 21. So we're going to a bunch of the castles from um, Game of Thrones. We're staying in castles and a little B&B. &B. We're, we're really getting it. I'm going to be doing seances all over the place and mediumship. So anybody wants to go, There's a, it's not that expensive. Um, anybody wants to go, <laughs> contact me. Yeah. So I'm, that's yeah. in May, it'll be Ireland, and I'm trying to hopefully get to the rest of UK in an early fall. We'll Brilliant. Fingers crossed, yeah. Brilliant. Expect a message after this show. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yay! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Christopher. You're like a teacher's assistant, I like that. Yes, you, a magical candle you never, ever, ever blow out. <laughs> Whether you lick your fingers or use a candle snuffer or you oxygenate it on top because you have to leave the wick hungry. That ends a spell. You blow out decorative yeah. candles. You blow out birthday candles because that's part of the wish. That's a magic spell in itself. But if you have a working magical candle, uh, even devotion candles you could blow out. You never blow it out. Always snuff it because it leaves the wick hungry. It leaves the wick hungry for when you do relight it if it's a continuing like two-week candle.
Um, somebody said about fun. Yeah, go to Ireland. And seances now, because it's like this Zoom type world, seances work on Zoom just like we're around my dining room table. It's, I didn't know that they would, but just like who well, you guys are ghost hunters, you know that the, all the equipment they have is like enhancing and working with it. Um, now I'm doing regular ones that anybody can come to. I have people from the UK, like Chris is coming or has been to one. Um, it's, you know, we have these little heads on a little thing and I, and we, it, it's almost like we're all around the dining room table. So I'm trying to make the best of technology. And again, for people who can't <laughs> come to LA or when I'm not there. So always opportunities. Brilliant. <laughs> oh. oh, you are so sweet. He is great. He posts things. Okay, you're my assistant. My, you're my unofficial <laughs> assistant. It's good. It's going to be this right. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm, you've told us that you're um, a good witch and we're coming up to Halloween. Um, do, you, do you do anything for Halloween that involves... No. Yes, actually, Halloween. yeah, of course. Um, Halloween is actually Samhain. It's the pagan holiday of Samhain, um, which is we celebrate the dead. Halloween is when the veil is thinnest between all the worlds. It, I mean, the whole year, it is because we celebrate the dead. The dead are holding up this veil. So much more paranormal. It's a great time for investigations. It's a great time for seances. The reason, actually, people dress up, and this comes from the UK. You dress up is because people, everybody knew that spirits are out on, on All Hallows. So that's why you would put on costumes to scare away the bad spirits. That's why you would put jack-o'-lanterns in front of the house and carve them to keep away the bad spirits. Um because the veil is thin. So, but in the pagan community, if you're gonna celebrate Samhain as a holiday, a holy day, it's, we celebrate our ancestors. You put out a beautiful altar, all your dead ancestors, anybody who's died that year, you help cross them over. It's a, it's very similar to in Mexico, there's Dia de los Muertos. It's a time to celebrate the dead and the veil is thin. So, you know, do trick or treat, dress up, have a party and celebrate your ancestors, the dead. The other time it's thin is May 1st. That's Beltane. Again, going into Celtic, I think. Um, that, but that's different. That The veil is thin, but that's the fairies holding up the veil. So that's more about fertility and fun and wild and spring and new life. So it's not about the dead. It's about new living. But those are the two times the veil is thin. But it's the Samhain, Halloween. I always do something crazy. This year is not so crazy be because you can't do big events. I was supposed to be in New Orleans at the, the the biggest in 20 years vampire ball. I do seances with good vampires, Father Sebastian, Sabretooth Clan. I met him on Ghost Adventures. Um, we were it was Saturday night, full moon, daylight savings. But again, it's going to be a virtual event. But I'm actually conducting a wedding on Halloween day. But the day before, I'm filming with Trevor Moore, a TV show. I'm going to definitely do some stuff. Last year, we did a four-hour live show, Ghost Adventures. That was hard. Ghosts don't know break for commercial. A live show is mm -hmm. hard. The year before that, oh, no, the, last year I was doing a thing with Bridget Marquardt and Holly Madison, the old Girls Next Door Playboy Girls. We were talking to Hugh Hefner mm -hmm. at, at Holly's house. So I, and the year before that, or one year was the, I've done two Ghost Adventures Halloween specials. The year before that, I did, again, that was my first, try to do it live seance we had one of those 360 cameras which you know that people can, like a game like if, if there's eight people the person watching it can switch a camera and it was it was wild because it was kind of like a game show it's like the, i'm dealing with the spirits around the table with real spirits and then you know fred from ohio calls in and can you talk it was like kind of game show but it was fun so i always take advantage of both Halloween, the veil being thin and doing something wonderful and fun and magical and also celebrating the other side. Love one. Um, so we have to talk about ghost adventures. Um, okay. What, how, how did it come about you being on the show? Well, the first time actually was so goofy because I, I it was just like, you know, when they show up to a location they call in local whatever people who've experienced things there. And it was their ha Haunted Hollywood, I don't know, five years ago, Haunted Hollywood episode. 
And they had heard, I'm on the board of the Hollywood Arts Council. It's a charity that we support arts and put art in the school. And because of who I am, I used to do at the American Legion Hall, I would do uh, ghost tours and seances. And we do all dress up with old music and, and fun things. And they had heard, Zach had heard that I had talked to Charlie Chaplin there. Um, and so they called me in as just one of those one-off interviews. And so I, so I explained how I, many of you have seen that episode, I had talked to him there and he wasn't in costume and that he sat in this chair and he was swirling his drink and he was saying he was back because he had been banned from the club in that communist fair. And then Zach was just kind of like, well, did you know this was the chair Charlie sat in? I go, no, no, this is just where he was sitting. So his dad was like, oh, this girl's gifted. Um, but I thought it would be just kind of a, a one-off except all of a sudden then they start calling me in for if they need a seance for something or they a lot for investigation for something like i believe me they are so legit they tell me nothing i know people like the show don't like the show and because it's too much but their passion is why it's in it's like 11th or 12th year in 20 something season because they're like that kids that childlike thing i talk about is they go in with 120 percent so some people are going who are these big guys and t-shirts like no that's the passion but hmm. believe me i know they, even this week they i know nothing he calls me last minute on purpose Drive here, fly here, do here. Okay, because he doesn't want me to know what it is. Here's an address, here's whatever. It's like, okay, Patty, you walk in and tell us what happened. I'm like, I'm always scared to death. It's like, oh God, what if I'm not psychic today? What if I get crickets? What if I get nothing? <laughs> I'm, but their places that they go are always so vetted out. They're so charged. You always like, okay, this happened over here and this happened over here. Um, so, but it, it, they never let me know anything. I, I literally, they will keep you locked in the van, you know, with the air conditioning going, locked in a private, in a room, in the trunk of the car if they have to. Even last year, um, it was again, last minute, fly to, fly to Arizona. Okay, fly to Arizona. And usually, again, I've done the show so many times now, they would have a production assistant pick you up or a PA and they go, ah, we've just rented a car in your name. Just fly in, get the car and drive out to us. I'm like, okay, I'm like, can I have an address? <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not that good of a psychic. I really need a street address where to go. So they, they gave me this address and I'm driving out through Scottsdale. I mean, air, through Phoenix, through Scottsdale, out into the desert in the middle of nowhere. Then I'm off a of paved road. I'm in a dirt road in the middle of the desert. I'm like, oh my God, where am I? Knowing nothing about it. And then I get there and they're not even there yet. All there is is Justin, the equipment kid, the new kid, which I knew from, I think, other episodes i'm like justin where is everybody he's like oh, oh they'll be back they'll be here soon and and then that's he again i don't know anything about the house but he's like i don't get out of the car i'm like what he goes oh yeah there's killer pigs <laughs> what <laughs> yeah they're called javelina they're they're hordes of herds of wild pigs and they'll eat you i'm like i'm a city girl okay i'll sit in the car he goes, yeah they were here last night right here I'm like, okay so i'm sitting in the car and then he goes oh yeah and then there's scorpions, you know, those big spiders. I went, scorpions go, yeah. But if you have a black light, they glow in the dark. You could, you could see them. I'm like, I don't have a black light. I'm in the middle of a cheap little rental car in the middle of the desert. And there's no, <laughs> I'm just, so I'm getting like in the car more and more like this. And, and then he goes, and then I swear to God, almost like it's one of those hidden camera shows. The timing was so friggin' perfect. The wind whipped up through the cactus and the palm trees and he goes, oh yeah. And then there's valley fever. I'm like, valley fever? He goes, yeah, there's something spores or something in the wind in Arizona, parts of New Mexico, Nevada, that if it gets in your lungs, you're gonna die. I'm like, get me in the house with the ghosts, demons, portals to hell, I don't care. I, I, killer pigs, scorpion, no. <laughs> Ah, and then the crew showed up and then it became ah, run around with the, all the normal stuff. But it was, this, it's always, always an adventure. So we love the show, don't we? We yeah. love it. We think all the guys oh, are great. They're all they are. Guys. They're just good guys, you know. Sweet Can you guys. pass Aaron a message from me? Say he's absolute legend. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'll say Brett said. Absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant. Have you got anything? Is there any shows coming up with Ghost Adventures with you uh, appearing? Yeah, but yeah. I can't talk about it. Can't say. Okay. You can't say. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's exciting. I have to. I'd have um, to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's going to be a good one. Well, Miss Mary is going to be killed by Patty. Yeah, I go with that. Yeah. One. <laughs> what was you it? What's been? Oh, sorry, sorry, Sonia. Do I cut the power okay. of the beer off to get a good night's sleep? Yes, I do. I have a big, huge on-off switch. I do not, whether it's to go to sleep or whether it's to, um, you know, go to the grocery store and go shopping. I don't want to see somebody's dead mother. I don't want to be Long Island medium going, your mother wants to talk to you. Number one, that's not my business. <laughs> I don't think that's ethical if I haven't been asked. So I've created because since after that kid's not keeping your mother, an on-off switch. I know some psychics or mediums do it with a door, I close the door, I open the door. I literally have it like electric lights in my head. Now I'm psychic media. Now I'm just regular Patty, no special gifts. Um, it makes both stronger. It makes you be able to not be a crazy person in your day-to-day -day life. And it makes when you do flip the switch on 10 times stronger. So good question, thank you. And I do switch it off at night unless I want to do stuff. Like in my book, that dream school thing is a way that you really work it and you can guide it or work with spirit. Patty, I want you to produce and present a large night show in the UK. Investigate and just go, okay, well, I guess I'm going to go to the UK. Go for it. Pagan history, witchcraft, I teach that. White magic, I teach that. But it will not be dark, evil, demonic. Hallelujah. Only fun and spooky. That's my world, fun and spooky. <laughs> okay, great. You are my assistant, but now you could be my producer. You produce that for us. <laughs> um, this is fun. So you you teach pagan and um, witchcraft. Is there any? Do you do it online? I do it online, and I do it very inexpensively. Again, I don't want money to be keep anybody from empowerment ever. I have a regular Thursday class going right now. That's ten dollars US. I don't know what that is in UK. Christopher, I think it's come. It's through a place called House of Intuition. It's a metaphysical store here in LA and they've spread out everywhere. They've they've gotten really big, but it's $10. I have, I'm actually doing a series called Old World Magic for the Modern World. Um, or, you know, one week will be protection, one week will be love magic, one will be, be and this tomorrow I'm teaching kitchen magic. Um, just all sp basic spell crafting, how to do this dragon work. Um, it's always different. And I also teach with, uh, Nick of Haunted Diary, who is in the UK, he's got this whole, he's kind of like a promoter, producer, putting stuff together. Sweet kid, Italian kid living in Jersey. Um, and he's creating a little conglomerate for himself. So I teach with him and my friend Richard Lael. He's the Satanist guy that I got a, an episode of Ghost Adventures. He's, he's the sweetest Satanist. He's not. I, remember. I mean, yeah, we'll he doesn't that. believe in it. it it's, he's like me, but just different cosmology. Um, but I teach for him. I've got a class. The No, I don't have a class this week. I just had a class on an intense love magic class last weekend. Next weekend, I think I'm teaching tarot. I'm going to teach um, mostly intuitive tarot, but how I work it. And the week after that, because we're by Halloween Samhain, we're doing on Saturday, we're doing how to do a seance, how to safely do a seance. And on Sunday, we're doing a seance. Again, inexpensive. They're like 20 where HOI classes are ten dollars each, uh, Nick's classes are twenty dollars each, but we've been, but they're longer. But we've been doing a thing. If you buy a package deal, like if you go to Saturday and Sunday class, you get it for way cheaper. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I I like to I speak a lot and I teach a lot, and again, I I want everybody to have an opportunity to. Yeah, know, to be honest with you, I think you might, you might have a new student on the way. <laughs> yes, please do. Come on. Yeah, I will. It's, it's all like, find it on my website or my social media. Patty Negri, just put Google Patty Negri. <laughs> uh, Patty Negri Psychic Medium on Facebook. My regular Patty Negri page too, but I can't friend anybody else. I've got a thousand waiting. But Patty Negri Psychic Medium, Patty Dot Negri on Instagram, at Patty Negri on Twitter, all those. Usual. But the holding place is pattynegri.com where you can find everything. But Perfect. yeah, you have to come play with us. Classes 
are kind of like this. I'm all over the place and big and you should leave feeling really good about yourself and have new techniques to make your life what you want it to be. I do do tarot reading, um, but um, I stopped, it was a bit overwhelming. Um, couldn't get my head around it. So I kind of like put it away, but I get asked now and again to do it, but I don't know, I just find it really. Well, follow your passion. See if the, if the reason you're not if the reason you're not doing it is because you're fearful or insecure. You can get past that. If the reason you're not doing it is because it's not your calling, then why do it? Do something else. Yeah. Start trusting. See if something is fear driven or doubt driven. Work past that if it is. But if it's just like, why am I forcing myself to do that because that's not my gig? Then you do something else. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I and again, because, yeah, because that's what in my tarot, yeah, yes, we'll look at, okay, the pentacles are this and the cups are this and the wands are this. But I really teach people, yes, you learn the book and you learn what they are. And then you forget the book and you forget what they are. And then you, I teach you, people to use their intuition. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, just before we go, do you have anything coming up in the near future? I do. Tonight, or do you, you guys, it'll be tomorrow morning. Um, I'm doing uh, Coast to Coast with George Norrie. I don't know if you have him there so much, but here he is the paranormal dude. Even mainstream people watch him. He's like in here in LA, he's late night AM. Um, and one of my dreams for as long as I could remember was to be on Coast to Coast with George. He has alien people, Bigfoot people paranormal people the best of the best the best of the authors i did his tv show last year he has a tv called beyond belief but it's for gaia.com you know that network gaia.com so not everybody has that that's a pay service but now i'm doing coast to coast tonight um i'm again maybe some ghost adventures coming up i am also another thing i like because of my other backgrounds there's a, a american comedian named trevor moore um he was from a Back in the 90s, he was from a group called The Whitest Kids You Know. Funny, funny guy. Um, he has a show called The Trevor Moore Show. Um, and I'm kind of his psychic sidekick. I, you know, it's like the talk show format on the desk at the thing. And he, um, the first one he did when he launched it, it's on Comedy Channel, Comedy Central. He did a 24-hour live broadcast, 24 hours. Um, and... Every hour we solve the problem of the world. World peace, the first hour, war, global warming, whenever that, it was funny. I mean, we didn't really solve it, obviously, but we at least caused thought process, which is what I'm big on. So, and he kept me literally on for like, I'd never even worked with him before, like seven hours. I'm sitting there with my dowsing rods going, okay, we're going to talk to Abraham Lincoln. What? <laughs> um, but now it's a regular one hour show. And we just started filming it before the quarantine lockdown and then it all ended and Hollywood's still just coming back. It's been like a ghost town because it just, you can't, you can't have big groups. It takes, mm -hmm. you know, if there's two people on stage, there's 30 people standing behind them. Um, but we're filming again on the 30th. So I just got all my protocols, how many COVID tests I have to have, how much this. And when we're filming at Viacom, only three people allowed on the stage. So they're figuring out the protocols. But we're thankfully that's going back. So, so mm -hmm. that's coming up, and uh, and then I've got I've got my podcast, The Witching Hour, which is really great. It's an interview show where I interview the best of the best from all over the world, um, everything from you know French movie stars to uh, Orion Foxwood to Kyle Thomas, just these people, the best in their fields of paranormal and otherwise, um, which is great. And that's great, but I also wanted to talk to people like this. So, um, so I started a, a live. I started a witching hour live where I do readings. It's it's a chaotic one hour. It's on live paranormal. It's tomorrow Thursday night too. 
it's tomorrow. I do my one hour teaching for House of Intuition and then I'm gonna go right into my chaos of call in. And the first time I did, this will be only my third show. I'm like, oh my God, somebody's like, go talk to my grandma and I'm trying to run through this thing going, this is hard, this is hard. So I had people email me questions and I'm still figuring it out every week we're different. But I love doing that. I love, again, I, I'm doing a lot of speaking. Again, a lot of that has become virtual lately. It's just, just people. I like people. I like magic. I like uh, magic people. <laughs> what is this? Uh, you consider tarot more than a focus tool rather than the written meanings but in the end of all? Oh, God, yes. It's a focus tool. It can be. The, like, if, if I'm not getting something from spirit, I'll go, okay, the seven of cups is this. But that's rare. I am going, hey, Jason. I, I'm literally going you know, I'm telling a story. I come up with my own spreads and it's again, it's a, it's a launching pad for, to talk to spirit, to talk to their guides, to talk to my guides. And you're just a little tool along the way. Help out. Really? The way I, I, there's a lot of way, ways to do it. That's just the way I do it. Um, so again, we just want to thank you so much for taking your time out to speak with us. It's been amazing, hasn't it? Yeah. We're still starstruck. I'm not going to lie. We're still starstruck. Thank you, guys. Well, you're a lovely host. Thank you so much thank for having you. me on. So wait, thank, and thank you for everyone tuning in and for all your questions. Um, we're back tomorrow, aren't we? Yeah. We're going to live tomorrow night. Yeah. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.